Sovereignty. Sovereignty is the exclusive right to exercise supreme authority over a geographical region or a group of people. For centuries, that authority had been solely in the hands of monarchs. But today, nearly every sovereign nation uses some form of representative government. The United States fought hard for its sovereignty almost 300 years ago, but at a great cost. One great cost was the sovereignty of that land's native people. The United States Constitution mentions Indians a couple of times. Most notable are Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3, which states, Representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states, excluding Indians not taxed. And Article 1, Section 8, which states, Congress shall have the power to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states, and with Indian tribes. Despite hints in the Constitution that Indians should be treated as nations, the federal government forced many tribes to leave behind their lands. Here's a map of the Trail of Tears. And here's a picture of a traditional Indian boarding school where they were taught to integrate into American society, giving up not only their land, but their identity as well. But they fought back. Some fought with blood, others fought back peacefully. But despite their method of resistance, their goal was always the same, to preserve their culture. Today, the United States uh, federally recognizes some tribes. Some have been granted sovereignty, and they are considered domestic dependent nations. This map shows all federally recognized tribal land. It's in green. And as you can see, there's not much green on this map. In contrast, this map shows state boundaries. These tribes should have the same, if not more, rights than states, especially since they are tax exempt. Sadly, there are many times when states overrule tribes. One instance is gambling. Due to the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, some states have been able to determine what kind of gaming can occur on tribal lands. Ironically, this act was put into place so tribes could have control over gambling on their native lands. One such incident occurred in South Dakota. Due to the wording of the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, gaming can only occur if the state has similar gaming. This leaves Indian gaming in the hands of states, not the tribe. If a state had outlawed gambling altogether, tribes cannot have any gaming halls at all. But usually these issues are over Class 3 gaming. You're probably wondering what Class 3 gaming is. Well, Class 1 gaming is social gaming, or gaming with minimal prizes. This is exclusively regulated by tribes, with no federal or state involvement. Class 2 gaming is games of chance, usually the game of bingo. This is regulated by the tribe, providing that the state in which the land is located does not prohibit gaming. Uh, this does not include slot machines or other electronic games of chance. That's covered under Class 3 gaming, which is, as I mentioned earlier, everything else. Um, covers slot machines, high stakes gaming, and, electro and electronic games of chance. Despite these regulations though, some tribes have been very successful. Most notably, the Mashantucket Pequot tribe of southeastern Connecticut. They own and operate the largest casino in the world, the Foxwoods Casino Resort. And not only is it the largest casino in the world, but it's also the most profitable cas single casino in the world. And now, regardless of your personal feelings towards gambling, this is an impressive feat. Think about it. The largest casino in the world is owned and operated by a tribal nation. That is an impressive feat. However, despite this, they still fight the federal government over many things, including labor laws. Here's a map showing the United States uh, broken down into states that support la unions and are right to work. Indian tribes, despite being sovereign nations, still fall under federal labor laws. So if a U.S. worker were to work in a country such as Canada, or the United Kingdom, they wouldn't fall under their country of origin's federal laws. Instead, they would go under that nation's federal laws because they are a sovereign nation and they have every right to. So even though these uh, Indian nations are domestic dependent nations, they should still have the right to determine how people should work, 
where they should work, just like any other country. Sadly, though, this isn't the case. But I feel that if these, as long as these brave men and women keep fighting for their cause, I feel confident that absolute sovereignty will be granted one day in the future. <laughs>